Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing, where today I'm going to try and give some advice on what fishing boat to buy. I've got one of the world famous Wilson Flyers, but hey, although I'm satisfied, don't believe me, let's go down the south coast, let's go down to Langston Harbour and meet with one of the top sea fishermen down there, Wayne Coburn, who's got a Wilson Flyer, it fishes more times than any other Wilson Flyer that I know of. Let's go and see what Wayne can give you in the way of tips. Well, this is uh, Tara then, my Wilson Flyer, and as I said, she's um, seven years old now. Um, not bad nick, really, for a boat that's been used as much as this has. The pros and cons of them are they're, they're a very, very popular boat. They're, they're very stable at anchor. Um, the flybridge I like a lot. People will tell you it catches the wind a lot. It doesn't catch it that much, uh, but it does give you a lot of protection as well when you're motoring along. Um, they do slam if you're going into a head sea. They do sound a bit tinny as well when they slam, so in particular it feels, you know, that um, it doesn't feel as bad as it sounds to be fair. But if I'm honest as well, a lot of boats of this size, they will slam in a head sea. They, you won't get away with that. But um, these in particular, this whole design, if it's a flat calm day, they whiz across the water lovely. If there's a bit of chop actually, it's not so bad. But if there's a bit of a head sea, then they will slam and you will have to take the revs back, uh, trim the engine and... Um, that's all you can do really, I'm afraid. Okay, another thing that people uh, put on Wilson's are kill guards. Um, now, for my part, I, I don't launch this boat uh, off of Shingle Beach, it's off the trailer. You are going to get scratches, chips, knocks on the kill. Um, it, it's just part, of, part and parcel of putting a boat on a trailer. As soon as a wave hits it, a bit of a swell, it's going to knock, it's going to bang around. You've not really got much choice. All I've done and all I ever do is I, I just fill them. Now the reason I don't want to put a kill guard on on any, well, any boat actually for that matter of this type, I want about a stainless kill guard at the moment, is because you fit the kill guard, you screw it in. Those screws eventually will work loose, will allow water in and it will get inside your hull. This boat next to us has got a, a stick-on kill guard which is a much better option if you do want to go for them i'll much much rather suggest you put on one of these rubber ones um, which obviously is glued on takes away that fact that you're going to get any water ingress when you buy your wilson's uh, they, they don't come with this hatch fitted uh, they come with this plinth here now the idea that i wanted was to find the biggest hatch i could find that would fit out on onto this um, this plinth they put on here. Now this hatch is perfect because what it allows is it allows a five kilogram Bruce anchor to come out without any problem. I mean this is my spare because I've got it set up for, uh, for the uh, anchor yanker old knee ring type. But you'll have to put this in yourself. But um, they're not hard to put in and um, nice bit of storage area there for the front of your boat. Now on a small boat of this size I couldn't afford to put a powered up radar as much as I would have liked to have done. Um, a lot of people do and it is a great idea. Uh, if you get caught out in the fog in particular, they are fantastic. Um, but failing that, this was the uh, cheaper option which was, uh, this is, is an Echo Max, um, I believe it's a 230 this one. Okay, well I've fitted a, a Shakespeare uh, 5101 area on. It's a big aerial for this boat. but. They work on line of sight, so the higher it is, the better it is. And this is a quality aerial as well. And in fact, um, just just this week, I spoke to somebody 15 miles away from me. In fact, on this boat next to me, he was um, using this aerial and his smaller aerial, clear as a bell, lovely job. And the thing is, it's your lifeline, so choose a good aerial. Uh, another little feature I put on mine were these hand wipers. Uh, I didn't want to put a motor on an electric wiper. Um, and these, this, for what I've got, these are ideal. Little hand wipe like that clears my screen nice and easy and uh, they do the job and they weren't that expensive so uh, nice nice feature I think these are well this version is the uh, six foot cabin version now to be fair I bought the boat seven years ago as a new package um, and I had uh, visions of overnighting and doing all sorts in it really it's a fishing boat out and out so with hindsight I'd have gone for the cuddy version but what the six foot version does give you, I think anyway, is uh, obviously the storage space. You can overnight two in it because there's two bunks either side. But also I think it gives you a more comfortable ride position because you're more midships. So if you're bouncing around in a, in a heavy sea and these sort of holes will knock you around a little bit unfortunately. But this is a slightly better position I feel for comfort. 
The rod holders I prefer are these um, strong stainless ones. Uh, I know a lot of people fit the plastic ones on, but if I'm honest, I've had a few fish that would have ripped those straight off without, without a shadow of a doubt. So these are nice and strong, and also these are adjustable. So if I don't like the angle, I can angle it out slightly, put it where I like. The flush mounted ones, again, they're, they're a t of a type that I prefer. You can put your rod in while you're traveling. I've never had a rod bounce out yet. If you, if you want to use a little lanyard, even better, keep it safe. Um, and also, I like to sit back here on my seat box. I've got a rod there, there, there and there, and usually everything's out of the way and I can fish comfortably. I fitted a fuel water separator. Um, with any engine, four stroke, even the two strokes, you do not want water in your fuel system. It can cause immense problems and expensive ones to cure. Um, very, very straightforward to fit. Some people say put the bottle one side, the other side. I prefer to have it this side so I can pull the fuel through from the tank, through the separator um, and prime. One thing I will say with your fittings, regularly check that your O-ring inside these fittings isn't damaged. If it's damaged, what will happen is you'll plug the bayonet in and you'll end up sucking in air as well and you'll wonder why your engine's not running right. What I found was another good investment were these guides. Now basically they fit on your trailer and they are a godsend, especially when, like myself, you do a lot of uh, self-launching. These make things very, very simple. They bring the boat in nice and square on the central rollers and they you can pull it in. What happens sometimes is you get your boat on central, a bit of wash go past and it will start slamming the boat on on the um, the, the roller holders which, which scratches the, the hole terribly. So these are a very good investment. You can knock your own ones up or buy these ones pre-made. Okay, what we've got as well on my boat, uh, and a lot of boats have them, are bearing savers. And uh, they work on a very simple principle. Um, they fit on, fit on here, it's sprung loaded with grease and basically there's a spring keeping constant pressure pushing grease into uh, your hub. And I have found, without a shadow of a doubt, that these keep uh, your bearings um, lasting longer and, and basically they're a very good idea. And I would recommend that you put some bearing savers on, uh, especially if you're, um, if you're trailing your boat a lot as well because it's important that your bearings are sound. Okay, well my outboard is a, a Johnson, it's a 2004 um, 60 full stroke EFI, which is a electronic fuel injection. But to be truthful, the only thing Johnson about it really is these stickers, because this is actually a Suzuki. And although it's a 60, it's a detuned 70. So um, when you look at outboards, a lot of, you'll find a lot of manufacturers uh, are making outboards for other manufacturers, and they're badged up differently. But as I say, this engine's seven years old. Um, I service it myself. It's had a new care about last year, and if you look inside, I think it's uh, it's in pretty fair condition for uh, for the age of the engine. Um, these are quite important. If you keep a, an eye and make sure that you've got a, a, a good rubber seal on as well, because sometimes people put them on, they're kinked and they're perished. Anything that gets in water, it's not going to do any of these contacts any favours. So um, what you really want to do is make sure that your cowling sound keeps it in good nick. Okay, this is the dipstick. So basically you'll be checking your uh, your oil. Mine comes between these two holes here and as you can see it's there. So it's just underneath the uh, full point. Now that is due a change. It's got a bit of colour in it. I mean that was about nine months ago I think I changed that oil. So it is due a change. Don't want to be seeing any any wateriness, any, any emulsification in that. If it goes milky then water's got into your oil somehow. Exactly the same with your uh, your transmission, your gearbox oil. It wants to be clear, does not want to be milky. If it's milky, you've got water getting in and you've got a problem. Okay, well there's quite a big prop on this uh, engine actually. Um, on a lot of 60s uh, and even 70s you'll see smaller propellers than this, but this this gives me, um, gives me very good performance for this, uh, for this engine. Um, now with a lot of four strokes, what happens is if you're trolling along at low revs, they are economical. If you give it the beans, then uh, then you'll use a lot more fuel. I find, on uh, from personal point of view, about 3,800 revs um, is will give me about 16, 17 um, miles an hour. Well, there's a lot of pros and cons for Wilsons, um, but at the end of the day, it's been a very good boat to me, um, and for the price, there's not a lot that can touch them really. 
um, and they're they're pretty well built. Uh, and yeah, I'm very happy. And unless I win the lottery, I won't really be changing it uh, anytime too soon. Well, I think you'll agree that's really interesting what Wayne had to say. Some of those tips are really good. Now, I've got the same 17 foot Wilson flyers way, but I've got the short cab in the cuddy version, they call it, it's right up the front. I wanted tons and tons of space because I do a lot of shark fishing. I'll show you around it. Right, come on, let's check it out. This is the short cuddy version, which is cut back here. I didn't have any doors, I left mine open. I wanted to keep it open if I could, you know. I want as much space as I can. And if you have doors, they stick, they jam, you've got a bit of tackle box there, you can't open the door with it. And then you've got stuff inside, you can't get it in, you can't get it out. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to trail my boat everywhere, I'm not going to leave it in a marina locked up. So I've got nothing to lock up, I might just as well drag it and tow it around and have plenty of space inside. I'll show you around the outside first. Now up on the side here, on the side of the flying bridge, I've just screwed these in. They're two rod holders that I can put rods either up the way or when I'm drifting for sharp, I've got the angle there on a side on drift. I can put a run up out there, reel on the ratchet and on the clicker. So if a shark takes, it spreads the lines a bit more. Then down here on the bow, I've got two other bow rods so I can walk right up the front, put a sharp one up there. So these really, that one's for storage. The two bow holders, really, if when I'm drifting for big pole beagle sharks, uh, you know, it spreads the lines out. I can fish three lines drifting from a 17 foot boat. They don't converge at the back, and that's good. So no tangles. Don't make the mistake of thinking this was just held on by bit of electrical stretch tape. It's bound on with fishing line, 50 pound test fishing line, and then taped over. There is no way that is ever gonna come off. It's plastic, it's just waste pipe, sink waste pipe, and I cut a notch in there so it takes the access for the real seat to go in. No problems, been up there three years, not even moved. Maybe now and then I wanna just, you know, alter this tape a bit, another bit of tape, job done. So I've got four rod holders up the front. Let's check out down the back. Right, I've got three plastic flush mounted rod holders here, one, two, three, stern facing, angled out sideways for drifting if I want to go shark drifting, and one just slightly off about, not even 45 degrees, about 30 degrees, so that I can fish a, a bottom rod that way, and this one's fishing just outside. If I'm drifting sideways, I can put this one in here, the line goes out that way. I've got the one up on the canopy there, and I've got the one on the bow. So three shark rods, no problem. Right, not only have we got 10 rod holders, I've got 11. There's one there, centre rod for a centre line going over the engine counter. When I'm anchored up, I fish two here, two there, and one straight down the middle. I mean, I really ought to catch something with that lot out, didn't I? I've got no excuses. Now, another adaptation I had was having a bench seat fitted down at the Wilson factory. I thought I'd be able to lay on that while I'm waiting for a shark run to come. Uh, wrong. I get it cluttered up, but I tell you what, it's brilliant for storing tackle, put your bait board on there, no problem at all. Get your bait board out. Look, I mean that's made to measure. This cost me nothing, that cost about 100, 150, something like that. And I can put all tackle on here as well, so although I don't lay on it, it's really, really handy. On the inside of the hull I had this extra reinforced plate put there because I wanted a, a chair pedestal, which I don't know if it's American or what it is, but I had that one. It's got all the screw fittings down there, so it's not going to tear up from this. And a very nice, comfortable chair. It's padded. It's another huge investment to start with, but it's got removable leather seats and it's really quite comfortable. Now, drawback here is the fittings here. The seat won't 360, it catches there. So I can only go around this way. I can't swivel totally, but I can seat no problem. Here's a drawback with the Wilson and these fly bridges. It's right here, so sitting down and driving really to me is not an option. I want to stand up. Here I'm going to get beaten to death anyway. I can't see through there enough through the front screens. And if I stand up, I can at least see where I'm going. So if I'm here in the driving position standing, I can absorb all the shocks of the boats banging along. And let's face it, Wilson's, you know, cathedral holes in a head sea, they're going to bang. I can see where I'm going. I want to see what I'm running over. Pieces of wood, old pallets, crab pot lines. Uh, plastic bags around the prop, anything like that. If I'm seated, not good news guys, you can't see really what's going on. So this one, the seat, ah, oh, it's lovely, it's lovely. When you're fishing, sit back, relax. These were an extra investment I made. Just side on cockpit lights, shielded at the top. They light the whole of the deck up without lighting all the outside of the boat up as well. So I figure sort of navigation's safe and obviously I have my main 
anchor light on at the top as well. So this is on a flick switch, and on the other side, I've got um, a little socket, you know, for taking 12 volts, so I can put uh, live bait pumps, I can put uh, what we call Q-beams when we fish in estates, you know, spotlights and stuff like that, auxiliary lighting, that's the word I'm looking for. Little socket, and the radio, and the tape, and if you want, I could get a 12 volt television in there as well. Now maybe you'll get to see this, I don't know. I've got a tray like this, and I cut it down very, very low. Sponge, wash down stuff, gear fairy liquid, scoop, peapot, whatever you want in there. I don't want to put it in here because that's where my fuel tank's going to go. So I cut a piece of marine ply, a couple of seats there, and down in the bilge there, I can slide this straight over, drops in on the notches, beautiful, space that you'd never otherwise use, and then in goes the tray, all my wash stuff's down there, and I've still got the space to put my twin fuel tanks there as well. Another good item I made, I don't know why somebody doesn't think of this and actually do it themselves, you know, you probably make some money out of it. I just made up a little shelf unit, like a little bookshelf with a lip on the front here. I can put all my junk in there, my unhooking stuff, uh, bits of rope. The crab line, by the way, folks, is not for crab fishing, it's for dropping down chum bags. I've got my fish back, if there's anything I want to put to sleep. The spare bits of wire, it's just an ideal junk place. I can hang my towel on the end. I'm going to actually mount a knife on there, so I've got a knife through as well. And then I'll show you the inside as to why I figure this configuration gives you absolutely the most space you could ever get on a 17 footer. Okay, just to give you some idea, probably the sound's going to echo in here. This is just the, well, I call it a half deck or quarter deck version uh, with a forward cuddy. Now, here's my additions. This would just be normally open plan. I built a complete shelf unit in there. Just screwed it in via the support panels at either end here, between here, the other side, not the outside. Put some beading on it, lined it with carpet, and that is an unbelievably good strong shelf where you can just stack as much stuff as you want. It doesn't get beaten around too much. And then on the other side, to give me a wider configuration to take a chair, I've got all my cooking facilities. I've made a triangular shelf. Now note the angle of this one, how it cuts across to just in here, and you can put the screws through the side of the panel of the glass here, it's not alternate structure at all. So two really good shelves. Better, you've got these twin tunnels down here, if you can see them, I'll pull that out. Now I've built stuff, you can't put anything there, it doesn't roll away. So what I've done is I've built this rigid and glued, not screwed, glued in support of plywood. That stops stuff rolling out. Then I put a piece of carpet in there, you can put, put storage stuff in them as well. In goes the Q-beam light. If it bounces, it doesn't matter. I can pack loads of stuff in there. I, just, I can just throw it. I can throw it in. It, it just goes in, automatically comes up against this, and I've twinned it the other side. I put my tool kit, my kettle, everything in there. Brilliant. Loads of space in this. Look, at it's loads of space because I'm not using the whole cabin. There's all my cooking facilities, twin burner, just like a big charter boat. Gas bottle slides in here in a box. I build a box so it slides. Water canister, locks in there nicely. I don't use matches, just use a safety lighter here. Still not finished, folks. What about in here? If you can see it, where they put the anchor, I've carpeted that as well, but I've put a couple of shelves in here as well. i built the shelves the opposite direction. I can put everything I want dry in there. I can put charts in there. I can put all my safety flares, anything like that. I want to put my Put my flares in there, they can go up in straight inside. Easy access, hand in, grab them out. So that's what it's all about for me. That's as far as I'm concerned. Now I'm doing a really good sell on this boat at the moment and I have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with this company. But downsides, other than the fact they slam. Just these cheap plastic windows like this and the cheapo rubber seals. Now, Wayne down at, uh, on Tarin, you know, aboard Tarin, he's got rid of these. He's stainless steel bolted in acrylic, actually piece of acrylic, rigid. It firms everything up, doesn't leak because it's sealed in as well. So that's something worth looking at. I mean, I had no trouble with these at all, but again, you know, the boat's only like three years old, so I wouldn't expect any trouble with them. Don't clean them with a scour because I did that with my caravan once and wish I hadn't, got smoky glass. Just wash them a little bit of uh, soft water and a soft cloth and that'll keep the salt off. But if you want to change those, you know, just, just, just overcut your acrylic if you get it and bolts through there, seal it obviously, press it from the outside, seal it, bolts through and nuts on the inside. Now you get an idea, going from the seat to the cockpit, the front of the boat is just a world of its own with everything in there and the units that I've built, so a ton of space there. And when I come back, 
loads of driving position and plenty of deck space to get those big sharks in. I clip the radio up in the inside here, just inside so I can listen to it. Mic goes up here. The gubbins, the nightmare gubbins are all in there. I have nothing whatsoever to do with that. That goes to Kings Marina, Jersey, and they can play with it as long as they want. And I'm just happy when it all comes back okay. I've also put in here, notched out there and further down. You should be able to see a rod rack, gaff rack, net rack. Put stuff up the side here. Utilize that space underneath this sort of cover in there. And as you can see, I'll try and get the camera right. The camera is now touching the inside of the cabin. Just look at the enormous amount of deck space. And I'm in here, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I'm right inside the cabin itself. And you can see the amount of deck space this boat's got. And this is just the 17 footer. One final thing I'll show you, it's really a luxury item. Now, the luxury item being a highly expensive folding garden or picnic chair. Takes up no space on the boat. It can be stowed down there, exactly on that shelf I built. Fold it out. It slides up inside here. I'm sitting in the captain chair. My invited guest of the day, usually Wayne, or Mike, my, my son, will be sitting here. Here we are, all of the coffee on the radio. The cooker's down there, feet up. You can see absolutely all the rods out there. And I'm out the way over here. I'm out the way in the swivel chair. So look at the space we've got. It is enormous. Well, there you go. You've heard what Wayne Commons had to say about the Wilson Flyer, the 17 foot version. He's probably fished more than anybody else. He gets out there as much as he can. You're asking me? I'm a big fish nut, really. I've had poor Bingle Sharks to 160, 170 pounds. Not to the boat, not to the boat, inside the boat, right inside the boat, tagged and released. Phil Williams has got it on his website. And I've had common skate to 140 odd in here as well. I'm only missing a 100 pound blue shark, and I imagine that's just a question of time. Would I change it? I certainly wouldn't. I've dragged this somewhere around 3,000 miles now. They got their problems, inherent problems, they bang in a head sea, but you just come back on the gas. And that's for fuel conservation. I'm running that 60 horse Yamaha four stroke on the back. It's so quiet sometimes I, I, on a windy day I have to turn around and make sure the jet's going just to make sure the engine's running. Brilliant, it's as sweet as a nut. And do you know what I get to it? I run at about 3,400 revs in a flat calm sea or a light ripple and I will be doing about 16, 17 knots. And I'll tell you what, I've done 30 miles and I've still got some left in the tank. So I, all round I could probably do, given the sea conditions, 60 miles plus on good sea conditions. If it's lumpy, head sea, you come back on the gas. If you put the hammer down, you're gonna, you're just gonna take out shares in Shell or one of the leading BP pet, petrol stations. So just take it easy, get her up on the plane, nice, good, fair weather boat, I can't ask for anything else. For me, I don't think I'd change the Wilson Flyer. I love it. Oh, I knew this bench would come in for something sooner or later, and this is what I had it planned for. 